Let's start with exercises 22 through 27. Well, I read this, we have two lines that are not perpendicular. Okay, we'll take the red and the blue, and we're going to make them intersect like this, such that one and two are a linear pair. Well, I'll make this one one, and then this one will be two. One and four are a linear pair, so if this is one, the other linear pair must be there. And one and three are vertical. This is one, so three is opposite, and there we go. So now let's uh, assign the truth, or let's say not truth, to each of these statements. One and two are congruent. Well, they could be in the case of perpendicular, but again, unless it's true all the time, it is false. One and three are congruent. Vertical angles are congruent. So I'm going to assign a true to that. One and four are congruent. Same as we had in the previous one. Not true all the time, so that is false. Three and two, well, they are, of course, a linear pair. So that's going to be false. Two and four, well, that's the other pair of vertical angles. So they are congruent. How about this? Three, the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180. And that would be true because they are a linear pair. All right, well, that was pretty easy. Let's move on. So now here we have an algebra exercise, and we have to try to set up an equation. I've got x's here as variables. I've got y's here. So in either case, I'm either going to add these expressions, set them equal to 180 as their linear pair, or I could do it with the y's but I cannot use the vertical angles. I'd be mixing x's and y's, giraffes and elephants, as we say. So I'm just going to choose the x's. I'll take this relationship, and then we just go through the simplification. We'll do the algebra, combine our terms, and we're going to add 18, and we'll divide. Remember, that gives me the value of x. I'm going to substitute x into here, I'll substitute 7 18s plus 4 is 130. And over here, 4 18s minus 22 is 50. One final check, 130 and 50 does make 180. That checks out okay. Now, we could just say that that makes this angle 130 and this angle 50, if we're really confident. Or we could have gone through the exercise again with, with setting these two expressions. We're adding these expressions, setting them equal to 180, just as a check. But I think we got it pretty good because we've got these two equaling 180. So there you go. We're done. Exercise 31. Let's start drawing conclusions. I'm going to start with triangle GFE, random triangle. Don't really care what its shape is. And I'm going to make a bisector. GH is going to bisect the angle EGF. That's this angle down here. There's your bisector. Bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. So it doesn't matter whether it's equilateral, right, or obtuse, or just scalene. It doesn't matter at all. The only thing I can see here is that I've got one, two congruent angles. So I would say those two angles. I could put a little number one and two in there, but I'm talking about angle FGH and EGH. They are congruent. That's the only conclusion I can come up with. And I'll use the definition. If a ray, in this case the red one, bisects an angle, then it divides the angle into two congruent angles. Well, here we go with exercise 32. Well, let me look at this picture. One is a supplement of six. I've got three angles drawn here. And if I drew them like this, I could say, hmm, one is a supplement of six. I'm going to make the green one angle one. I'm going to make angle six the blue one. And it says that 9 is also a supplement of 6. Well, that looks like a feasible picture. So the orange is supplementary to the blue. And the green is also supplementary to the blue. That fits the word description I have here. And let me see. If 9 is supplementary to 6, 1 is supplementary to 6, it looks like the orange and the green angle have a relationship. And I would say that they are congruent. So. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 9 because of theorem 2.4. If two angles, that's 1 and 9 in this case, are supplementary to the same angle, angle 6, then they are congruent. 
Let's make the drawing for exercise 33, starting with segment AB, and I'll make CD perpendicular to it, intersecting at E. Perpendicular means they form right angles. So there you go. I'll see. All I want to do is find two congruent angles. That's easy enough. These two angles are congruent. I'll call those also 1 and 2. And I could show my reason. And if two lines are perpendicular, then they form right angles. I suppose I should also say that theorem one, or our other theorem 2.1 says all right angles are congruent. Well, here we go again with three angles. And we've got, let's make them match our description. Angle 5, complementary to angle 12. And angle 1, complementary to angle 12 as well. The only trick here is I had to make the blue one angle 12 since this is the one that's complementary to the other two. So now, 1 and 12 are complementary, 5 and 12 are complementary. I've got two angles complementary to the same angle. They must be congruent. And of course, those would be angles 1 and angle 5. Let's finish with a proof. Exercise number 42 here. Um, first, you've got this diagram already drawn. You wrote down your givens, and you know what you're trying to prove. So, set up our columns, our statements, and our reasons, and let's get to it. I'm going to write, start right there, angle 1 and angle 3. Well, since angles 1 and 3 are congruent, well, that's my given, I've got, to, I've got to do something next. Hmm. I'm going to go with this. How about angles 1 and 2? I know they are congruent because they are vertical angles. Now I could split this next one into another line or I could call it line 3 or I could just include it with line 2. I'm going to say angles 3 and 4 are also congruent. And again, the same reason. So I'll just make both those statements line 2. Now, uh, I guess I'm just about home free. I've got Angle 2 congruent to angle 4. That's where I want to get to. Now let's follow the logic. I've got angle 1 congruent to angle 2, angle 3 congruent to angle 4, and I've got angle 1 congruent to angle 3. That's again going to be the transitive property. But now there's actually four angles involved. Notice it says if two angles are congruent, two congruent angles, not the same angle. They are congruent to congruent angles, then they are congruent to each other. Transitive property, and we're finished.